Good afternoon. Can I remind members of the COVID-related measures that are in place and that face coverings should be worn when moving around the chamber and across the Holyrood campus? The next item of business is portfolio questions. And portfolio questions today is education and skills. And I remind members that questions four and five are grouped together and therefore that I will take any supplementaries on these questions after both have been answered. Point of order, Mr Simpson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Earlier today at First Minister's questions, I asked the First Minister about the Union Connectivity Review. I referred to a project between the UK and Scottish governments where they were working to develop options to cut rail journey times. Uh, and I said that Transport Scotland officials had been told to stop working on that. The First Minister, in her answer, said that I was completely wrong. Um, I was not wrong because I was at the public meeting where a Transport Scotland official said that had happened, as was the Transport Editor of The Scotsman, who duly reported it. Could the First Minister be invited to correct the record um, so that Parliament has not been unduly misinformed? Oh, I'm sorry. I thank the member for uh, his uh, point of order. Uh, that is not a matter for the chair. As the member will be aware, there is a mechanism to correct the record that members can proceed with. Uh, and uh, should they, of course, consider that is, uh, there is a need to do so. So uh, Mr Simpson could be pointed in that direction, should he wish to do so. So uh, on portfolio questions on education and skills, I was going on to say uh, that if a member wishes to raise a supplementary question, they should press their request to speak button or indicate so in the chat function by entering the letter R during the relevant question. And I call question number one, Pauline McNeill. Recording has started. To ask the Scottish Government what its position is on whether there should be more programmes in the school curriculum that aim to prevent violence and dating and intimate partner relationships. Minister Claire Hoggy. The Scottish Government is clear harassment and abuse of any form, whether in the workplace, schools, in the home or in society, is completely reprehensible and must stop. We are taking forward a range of actions, such as teaching our children and young people about safe and healthy relationships through relationships, sexual health and parenthood education, and funding programmes such as Mentors in Violence Prevention, aimed at reducing and preventing sexual harassment and violence in schools. We are committed to publishing national guidance for schools on addressing gender-based violence. This work is being advanced by the Gender-Based Violence in Schools Working Group, who will also review existing resources and develop new resources where needed. This work is expected to be completed by 2022. Pauline McNeill. I thank the Minister for that answer. Evidence from Canada and the US shows that school-based programmes which seek to prevent violence in dating and intimate partner relationships are affected. So I do welcome that answer. A recent report by Ofsted England said that of the 32 schools inspected, nine out of 10 girls said that unsolicited explicit pictures or videos were sent to them or their friends. And the report stated it's alarming that many children and young people, particularly girls, feel they have to accept sexual harassment as part of growing up. So can I ask the minister, if she can tell me now or whether she um, can investigate whether to, this is happening to any extent in Scottish schools, because it would be deeply concerning, and if she would keep me informed of the development of the programmes that she referred to earlier. Minister. Uh, I thank Pauline McNeill for that question, and I think she raises a very important point and something that, that would concern uh, anyone. We all want children and young people to be able to develop mutually respectful and responsible and confident relationships, and that their experiences of relationships are as such. Um, we will continue to fund a range of school-based programmes, which I, I hear that she um, welcomed, um, including Rape Crisis Scotland, who provide a national sexual violence prevention programme in local authority secondary schools across the country and have reached 48,000 pupils. I think what, what we all do realise is that the conduct and uh, behaviour of perpetrators needs to change if we are to end harassment and abuse across society, but also with our young people. And we must tackle the underlying attitudes and inequalities that perpetuate that behaviour. And I welcome her support in that endeavour. 
Question number two, Rachel Hamilton. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to support people in educational training in rural areas who have dyslexia. Minister Clare Hockey. We work with Dyslexia Scotland to provide support across the country to people with dyslexia. In January 2020, we published a final report marking the delivery of the 2014 Making Sense Reviews recommendations to improve outcomes for learners with dyslexia. Learners can access support under the Additional Support for Learning Act. Financial assistance is also available in colleges and universities to tailor support to the individual needs of students. Skill development and training opportunities are available to people with dyslexia through Skills Development Scotland's Modern Apprenticeship Programme and their Careers Information Advice and Guidance Service. Rachel Hamilton. I thank the Minister for that answer. Adult dyslexia assessment is crucial in supporting people who have not been identified in further educational training. Yet the SNP still don't offer free dyslexia assessment to adults. I've repeatedly pushed the government over the past 18 months to provide this service. Cabinet Secretary, Minister, unidentified young people and adults need access to free assessment and support, as without it there is a potential it is hindering their life chances. Can I ask, will she back the campaign to provide free dyslexia assessments for all adults in education and training, and will she also commit to undertaking an assessment into unidentified dyslexia in colleges, universities and the wider workplace? Minister. I believe uh, Rachel Hamilton um, wrote to my colleague Richard Lockhead in the last month and received a response from him um, given his portfolio responsibility. So I, I won't add to that here. But what we, um, we are assured of is that there is a support available to people with dyslexia in all parts of the country, whether they um, come from a rural community like one that Rachel Hamilton uh, represents or not. And that includes access to Dyslexia Scotland services, support at every stage of their education through apprenticeships and their career uh, support uh, services from De Skills Development Scotland. And supplementary, Martin Whitfield. I'm very grateful, Deputy Presiding Officer. Over the last decade, we've seen an erosion in the number of ASN teachers declining by 578 between 2010 and 2020, the date of the report. In East Lothian, this has led to a reduction from 56 to 35. Dumfries and Galloway, 136 down to 100. The Highlands, 191 to 161. And Moray, 103 down to 83. This is despite a 90% increase over the same period in the number of pupils who have been identified with ASN. Minister, should we be proud of that record here in Scotland? Minister. Um, I, I thank uh, Mr Whitfield for his question. And I, I think it's important to understand that under the Additional Support for Learning Act 20, uh, 2004, local authorities are responsible for identifying and meeting the additional support needs of their pupils and that local authorities and schools should prioritise personalised support to meet the individual physical and emotional needs of all children and young people, especially in light of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Question number three, Fiona Hislop to ask the Scottish Government what teaching and resources schools are providing to encourage pupils to engage in climate issues and ensure their experiences and ideas are acted on, including through the Climate Assembly. Cabinet Secretary Shirley Ann Somerville. Education Scotland's National Improvement Hub provides a range of resources that schools can use to support and facilitate pupil engagement with climate education. Initiatives like Eco Schools and Climate Ready Classrooms also support schools with this work. The Scottish Government and Education Scotland have reflected on the recommendations and commentary from the Climate Assembly report and continue to engage with young climate activists through the Teach the Future campaign and others as a key part of ensuring our curriculum and resources reflect the latest science and are as engaging as they can be for children and young people. Fiona Hislop. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary may be aware of the Scottish Youth Film Foundation's work at COP26, where they created films on climate change, interviewed guests and documented, edited and presented programmes through the COP TV initiative. And the Cabinet Secretary would also be aware that Education Scotland agreed to show COP TV in schools following my request uh, earlier last month. Building on the recently announced funding that will go towards the Climate Changemakers programme from the Children's Parliament, can the Cabinet Secretary let me know what engagement will take place with young people in schools so that the discussions about climate change can continue and that the views of our young people can be heard? Cabinet Secretary. 
Well, I, can I begin by commending um, the work that was undertaken by the Scottish Youth Film Foundation at COP26. Um, it was um, a very, very great initiative uh, to see to come to fruition. Uh, we are absolutely committed, not just in this area of policy, but in all areas of, of policy, to ensure that the views of children and young people form the bedrock of our policy development. That is something that is very important to me to ensure that that is done properly. The specialist support provided by the Children's Parliament and the Climate Change Makers programme will mean that the thoughts and the comments of younger children will be available directly to officials and to me and other ministers, eh, particularly at a time when we are refreshing the Learning for Sustainability eh, Action Plan eh, as we are at present, and that will allow us to build their ideas in right from the beginning of that project. Question number four, Paul O'Kane. To ask the Scottish Government whether it has carried out an equality impact assessment following reports that it plans to cease funding for the schools programme as part of the Scottish Attainment Challenge. Cabinet Secretary. The Scottish Government has fully considered the impact of all changes to the Refest Scottish Attainment Challenge and will publish its AQIA ahead of implementation next year. Paul O'Kane. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. The impact on these 73 schools is significant. 34 are set to lose uh, around or over £100,000 in direct funding. For 13 of those, it's around over £150,000. Education Committee heard yesterday of what the Scottish Attainment Challenge funds in schools. Staffing, additional support needs support, and a vast range of important interventions like speech and language therapy. So what would the Cabinet Secretary advise that head teachers in these schools cut? Cabinet Secretary. Well, we looked very carefully as we re refreshed uh, the Scottish Attainment Challenge about how we could ensure we are providing um, a fair uh, assessment of needs right across uh, the, the country. Uh, I would point out that there is no less funding that will be provided to schools and local authorities. Rather, it will be now distributed more equitably um, across the country. For example, 97 per cent of Scottish schools will receive pupil equity funding. That is £420 million over four years. Clearly, where there is work that is being going on through the schools programme, the local authorities are there to assist, as, of course, are Education Scotland during any transition process. Question five, Michael Mara. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what the local authority funding allocations are for the Scottish Attainment Challenge following the review of the programme. Cabinet Secretary. Funding allocations for all 32 local authorities for the Refreshed Scottish Attainment Challenge were sent to directors of education for each local authority and published on Thursday, 25th of November. As part of the billion pound Refresh Scottish Attainment Challenge programme from 2022-23, and on top of the annual PEF investment of up to 130 million and additional support for care experienced children and young people too, this total was 172 million pound over the next four years. Allocations have been confirmed on a multi-year basis for the first time from 2022-23 until 25-26, enabling better longer-term strategic planning across the education system. Michael Mara. I, th I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer and for our answer to um, my colleague Paul Kane. I, I think she may wish to examine the figures. As far as my understanding is, it is a reduction um, in funding from last year to this year and it's been top sliced. But the nine challenge authorities, previous challenge authorities, assessed to have the deepest, most condensed multiple deprivation are facing cuts to attainment funding of 60 per cent by 2026. In my home city of Dundee, there will be a cut from 6.2 to 1.3 million pounds. Hundreds of jobs and many transformative projects are at risk, undoubtedly impacting on attainment. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if she has abandoned analysis of the role of concentrated multiple deprivation on educational performance? Cabinet Secretary. Well, what I can point out is in this parliamentary term there will be a billion pounds uh, going into the Scottish Attainment Challenge. Um, that is uh, significantly more than £750 million pound that went in um, in the last parliamentary term. We have taken a decision, and it is not just a decision of Scottish Government, but a decision that is also backed uh, by local authorities, particularly through uh, COSLA leaders, uh, to ensure that we were providing um, a way to recognise that poverty exists in all parts of Scotland, rural, um, urban and remote, and that the impact of the pandemic is being felt in all parts of Scotland. And it's very, very important that we recognise that fact and have acted upon that. And supplementary, Oliver Mundell. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary mentioned there is still a small uh, but not insignificant number of schools who do not benefit from this funding. Many of them are small uh, rural schools, and even on a measure of low-income families, there may well be hidden poverty and deprivation there. 
what more will be done to give head teachers in those schools uh, flexibility to support their young people? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the implementation of the Pupil Equity um, Fund um, has been an important part of uh, the work, and that is based on free school meals. But what we have done through the uh, agreement with COSLA is ensure that every local authority is now uh, receiving um, funding, and that is based on the number of children in low-income families, uh, a, a direct uh, and, I think, a better way of making um, these decisions rather than the SIMD, which has been used in the past and has, we have been rightly asked to look at by um, Audit Scotland. So that will ensure that money is going to all 32 local authorities who will of course then work with any school who does not um, perhaps get the, the PEF funding directly uh, to ensure that they are being supported and that money is there, as I say, right across the country. And before I call the next question, which is question number six from Alistair Allen, could I uh, draw members' attention to the fact that for those who may wish to use the headphones, uh, they should plug the headphones into the side of the console and then press menu and then press audio and then press channel one. And hopefully that is clear. I feel I should be doing some air stewardess emergency exit signs here. Um, I digress. And so I hope everybody is, is uh, on, on line with that. And I now call question six, Alistair Allen. Er zijn vijf jaar geleden een half kinderhuis moentje en wees immer stuur speek gaalik tot aardig ook. In de naad dat je reunie wees de bedien gaalik en is gejeerd of een sasse de reunie gaan aan jongs ook. Dank u. En de respons is coming from Cabinet Secretary Shirley Ann Somerville. Uh, presiding officer, I'm, I'm afraid it certainly wasn't coming through my audio, so I am going to presume it is as per the business bulletin um, and um, go along with that at the moment, and, and perhaps we can seek some guidance for the supplementary um, in that case. Uh, the Scottish Government is proud to have provided financial support to MG Alpa for the development of the new Speak Gaelic initiative. This free multi-platform approach to language learning will allow anyone interested in learning Gaelic the ability to access a high quality course at any time that suits them. And I'd like to commend all those involved in bringing Speak Gaelic to this stage and look forward to the continued development of further phases. There are other Gaelic learning resources, of course, that have been provided that have proved very popular, such as Duolingo and Learn Gaelic, with high numbers signing up to learn. We expect Speak Gaelic will also benefit from this increase of interest. Uh, Mr. Allen. Presiding officer, can I say, I don't know if the others heard that, but I am beginning, as someone who wants to use Gaelic in this parliament, as is my right, I am beginning to weary of an occasion when I will either at a cross-party group get simultaneous translation or simultaneous translation that begins of my contribution in this chamber. Um, so uh, yeah, my question, uh, my question Dr. is... Dr. Allen, could I, sorry, just to, if you would resume your seat for a second, I, I appreciate the, the point you raise. My understanding is that the prior arrangement was rightly or wrongly, that the, the, the question on the, the business bulletin would be read out in English and then the supplementary translated into to Gaelic. Now, that may be an issue to look at. However, I think that might explain the, the problem uh, that some members experience. So hopefully that answer is helpful. I, I, I thank I, and take that point. Thank uh, President, President Officer and take that point. I suppose I was really referring to the fact that there have been numerous and many occasions in cross-party groups and in this chamber and in many other places um, where it's been impossible to, to obtain that. But I thank you for your time. Uh, and so my question is really just to ask, uh, as a supplementary to that, um, what difference uh, you think across Scotland, or what difference the, the Minister thinks across Scotland and across the world, uh, the new Speak Gaelic uh, facility will have. And we could follow to the numerous shot against the Visagian of Jiffer Moore, the Lokiyonsuk and the Gaelic and Saskira Kamhain, if you're all up against the Thurin Thur, and to the Minister Biach, Chachet, Edruk, Shanok, and the Gurdison Shaw, Ginashinta, Egis, Gehitter Nashinta. Thank you, Dr. Allen. Cabinet Secretary, I think you got the gist in terms of Dr. Allen's uh, first uh, posing of the question. Yes, uh, as to the subject matter. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, I, I really do hope that uh, uh, the point that Dr. Allen raises um, is something that we can see um, really, really develop and come to fruition. These resources, of course, are freely available on a variety of um, platforms, and that makes them available to learners um, right across uh, the world. And I hope that will attract people um, to um, pick up this language, not just um, here at home, uh, but also uh, wider than that. 
that. And we can, of course, point to the pupils in the New Gaelic School in Nova Scotia, for example, that may use this as part of their language learning. I was certainly pleased to say that in the first two weeks of the project, I understand that the website alone had 11,000 unique visitors, with 77 per cent of those users being from the UK and, of course, others, therefore, much wider afield. And supplementary, Donald Cameron. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Teaching Gaelic is intrinsic to increasing numbers of Gaelic speakers. Since 2016-17, only 25 new Gaelic teachers were recruited from PGDE secondary courses, falling short of the Scottish Funding Council's target of 31 in that period. Given the need to fill vacancies in Gaelic education, what action is the Scottish Government taking to ensure the 2021-22 target is not only met, but exceeded? Cabinet Secretary. Can I thank Donald Cameron for, for, that, for that, that very important question? I absolutely agree with him that there, we need to ensure that we are doing um, more to encourage uh, people into teaching, but particularly into Gaelic medium education. Uh, this is something which has been uh, discussed um, regularly with myself and my officials, and I know there's work, for example, uh, that the General Teaching Council has been um, assisting on to ensure that we are developing this. I'd be happy to provide much more detail than I can in writing uh, to Mr Cameron uh, to ensure that we can uh, see further progress in this and of course once he receives that letter if there's further um, work that he thinks we should be doing I'd more, be more than happy uh, to see if there's some practical examples about how we can take that up. Thank you and just for the, the record um, as a matter of clarification the Dr Allen's supplementary was uh, in fact translated through the, the headphones. Uh, I now call question number eight Brian Quito. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presenting Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to ensure the school curriculum and courses delivered by higher and further education establishments are aligned with the needs of businesses as they transition to a net zero economy. Minister Jamie Hepburn. Uh, we recognise the importance of preparing our learners to ensure they have the skills required to meet our ambitions in transitioning to net zero. In schools, our Learning for Sustainability Action Plan sets how we are working to enable pupils and teachers to build a socially just, sustainable and equitable society. In further in higher education, Skills Development Scotland and the Scottish Funding Council, through their joint skills alignment team, will ensure that our annual investment skills through work-based learning, upskilling and reskilling is fully aligned behind our aims for a net zero transition. Brian Wooto. Thank the Minister for that, uh, that answer. And as he said, it's crucial to delivering the future skills kit required to deliver a net zero economy. It will take the upskilling of existing teachers and lecturers. Can I ask what practically the Scottish Government is doing to ensure all our educators have access to this kind of training and upskilling? Minister? It will, uh, I recognise the point, and uh, of course, just as we seek to upskill uh, the workforce who will be practically applying uh, the skill set, he is correct to say we also need to make sure those educators have that skill set too. Uh, set out in our Climate Emergency Skills Action Plan, of course, is a commitment to taking forward the Green Job Jobs Workforce Academy, which is going to play an important element in the upskilling and retraining of people to meet that challenge. That is just as important for those who will provide those skills. So when we talk about the upskilling of people, that also includes our educators, and that is going to be a priority area for us as we take this work forward. Thank you. And that concludes portfolio questions. And I'll allow a very short pause uh, to enable uh, relevant spokespeople to move to their seats safely. Thank you.